Hello, hello. Thank you very much for tuning into the show. It's Marshall, and it's Saturday, November 2nd at 5.39 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone. Hope you guys had a great week. And let's talk about the Kyra and how I've kind of set this up in my environment. I'm going to kind of show you what I've done to be able to integrate the Kyra and combine it with uh, my RME uh, Digiface USB, which is basically an ADAT to USB converter that's hooked up to my mixer. There's some com complexity in my environment here. Uh, but basically, I've done this because I want to be able to utilize other synthesizers alongside the Kyra. Uh, the Kyra is fantastic with its eight parts, uh, but I would still like to <laughs> use some of the other instruments in here without having to switch back and forth between audio interfaces. From what I understand, Macs have an advantage in this uh, area. Being able to combine interfaces is something that you can do within the Mac uh, operating system and use the combined interfaces as a single source in a digital audio workstation, I believe. But for this video, we're gonna talk about how, to, how I've done this in Windows with my specific setup. Now, we're gonna be using a, a third-party driver. It's called ASIO for All. Uh, some of you may have heard of this. This has been around for a long time, this ASIO for All driver. Um, it is free to download if you just go to ASIO, A-S-I-O, number four, all.org, you'll see it there. I have downloaded an installed version 2.14 at the top, which was updated in 2017, May 23rd, 2017. So once you get this installed, you'll probably be greeted to a window that looks something like this. Now, it may not be in the advanced mode, so it may look like this. I don't know, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but basically, it's gonna show you all the interfaces that are connected to your machine, and you essentially can just select the ones that you want to essentially combine into a single source. The little wrench will take you to the advanced options, Depending on your environment, uh, you may have to do some playing around with some of this stuff. I can tell you that for me, it pretty much worked as long as I didn't have any of the selected sources as my primary Windows driver, right? So if I select one of these ADAT sources here, and then I go and I pick the RME interface, and then I try and load up Ableton, it'll crash. So just be mindful that you want your actual system, your whatever your Windows operating system is using as, as its audio outputs, and inputs are not any of the ones that you're selecting to combine, okay? So just a forewarning on that. If you get really into the weeds, you hit this little diamond here, it resets everything back to the default, no big deal. So basically what I uh, uh, am gonna do is I'm gonna pick the Kyra and I'm gonna pick my RME Digiface USB. Those are the ones that I want. If I drill down, down into this, the Digiface uh, shows up with all my ADAT. Uh, what the, there's kind of some weirdness, and I'll talk about that in a little bit of how I was how I needed to get that to show up. But Kyra shows up by default. It does show only two channels here, but in Ableton and I assume in other digital audio workstations, you're going to see all eight stereo uh, channels. All right, so this part is specific to RME users. If you're using MediaFace uh, and you've got your whatever your RME interface is, you may have to come into this uh, options window here and configure which channels you want to have set up as WDM devices. Now these are Windows specific uh, driver. It's like, a, I think it's a generic Windows type thing. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, but basically for these to show up in uh, ASIO for all, they need it to be in that format. If I disable these, this does not even show up in here. So that's a little interesting that that's how that works. I don't know, maybe I'm at a date on some drivers somewhere, but in my experience for what I had to do, I just wanted to make mention of that in case you're using MediaFace with an RME device. Uh, you may have to go through and set up the which channels you wanna show up as WDM devices. Uh, I also just wanted to quickly show you how you can access ASIO for all. Um, it should show up when it's active in your Windows tray here. You can see it's this little green thing in the corner with a little white triangle. If you click that, that'll take you to the ASIO for all driver options and you're good to go. Uh, the other way you could get to it is through your digital audio workstation. We'll take a look at Ableton Live right now and I'll show you what you need to do. All right, so now we're in a default project here uh, in Ableton just after firing it up. If we go into uh, options and preferences, and we select our audio option here. 
this is going to be where we need to do a couple things now that we've uh, set up ASIO for all. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're set to driver type ASIO. And then you're going to want to select your audio device as the ASIO for all V2 option. Um, you have the ability to do just the Kyra from here if you want. If you don't have anything else uh, that you're so worried about, once you plug this in, you can just use that. But um, yeah. In this case, since we've set up ASIO for all, we'll pick that. Then we need to set up our inputs. Now you can see here, none of these are, I mean, it's just kind of ver number one and two, and that's because we reset the uh, ASIO settings. I know in my case, I want to use channels one through 16 and have, uh, have the ability to either utilize them as mono or stereo pairs. So I'm going to select the, these. And I know that after channel 32, that's going to be the Cairo because it was second in the list of selected devices. If you have more devices showing uh, and you pick more than two, just be aware that the order is is descending. So we'll, we'll bring that up here again in a second. But basically, we'll pick that. Yeah. So again, if, if we go into our hardware setup, bring this back, this is another way to get into this. Uh, but again, these are descending order. So I know this is a 32 channel interface. This is a eight, eight channel interface or uh, yeah, eight stereo channels. So if I was to pick something in between here, it would add you know, onto that 32 before I got to Kyra. So just be mindful of the order in which you select these. Anyway, let's go onto the output. And I know in my case that uh, I'm outputting on 1718. That's going to be very specific to how you have things routed. And in my case, 1718 is routing audio from the um, DAW back through ADAT into my mixer and then goes back out through the, the mixer quarter inch mains into my powered studio monitor. So again, that's going to be specific to you. Now, um, the next thing we need to talk about here is, is our sample rate. So. I'm set to 441. I pretty much always mix in 441, and that's a personal thing, mostly because I feel that when you mix at, this is the rate that most people are gonna be hearing your music at, um, uh, you know, on a CD, not that anyone buys CDs anymore or anything, but anytime you compress the, your audio files down for distribution, uh, most of the time, unless it's for a specific thing like film or TV, or a video game or something, they may require you to send them a higher quality uh, version. But I usually mix at 441 just to make sure that uh, the detail that I want presented to the listener um, is exactly the way they're gonna hear it at that sample rate. But that's uh, a personal thing, personal preference. And the way, the reason why that is still showing like that is because if we go into the driver for the Digiface. Uh, this is my Army Digiface audio driver. And basically you can see down here the sync options. Uh, I'm basically locked on in inputs one and two. Those are eight channels each, so it's 16 channels. And those are locked in at 441. If I was to change uh, my Yamaha mixer to 4800 kilohertz or 9600 kilohertz, which it can do, uh, I would just need to match that sample right here. Uh, with whatever it is, and then it will resync up. This right here is the vSynth and input three. That's got a uh, Toslink connection on it, and it is also locked in uh, at that 441. But that's why Ableton is only showing this option here for me. So if you if you have an issue where you combine the interfaces and you're like, I want to use that 9600 kilohertz, uh, you probably need to check your whatever the. I'm assuming that it's probably going to be whatever is first selected here. I don't know for sure. It requires some additional testing. But now if we go over to the Kyra and we hit our uh, system button, you will see here that it is detecting the streaming at 4,800 kilohertz. All right, so then if we go back into Ableton, we go into instruments, external instrument, drop one into our MIDI track here. Uh, select our MIDI output uh, to the Kyra. There we go. And basically, channel one, channels one through eight are going to correspond to the timbres on the Kyra itself. So in this case, channel one, and we're going to set it to. Well, we if you're not sure, what you could do is once you've got 
the MIDI channel selected, go to the audio from option and just kind of leave it there. And then hit some keys on the keyboard and see what lights up here. So you can see 33, 34 is channel one. So if we select that, now we've got um, some bass. But if we go to channel two, and we're not sure where that's coming from, you see that's the next one down. So 33, 34 is channel one, 35, 36 is channel two, 37, 38 is channel three. And that's just in my, in my case. So again, depending on how you set up your inputs and output, well, mostly your inputs in this particular case, uh, in Ableton, it'll show up here. So now I wanna talk about like a quick uh, troubleshooting tip. So if you first set this up and you bring this in and you start playing on the synth, and you start hearing that nasty digital sounding stuff like that, what can you do about that? Well, if we go back into our preferences, go into our hardware settings, there's a couple things you can adjust. You can, uh, in this case, if we adjust our kernel buffer to, from two to three, that should take care of it. It may take a second for it to update. But just a note, uh, this when you get this set up, you may have to dial in some of your latency options and things like that, your buffer size. All those things may need to be tweaked on the fly. It may take some experimentation though. All right, so next I've pulled up a project that uh, I've completed using six different timbres uh, of the Kyra. And I've also integrated some Rolling Cloud drums, uh, kick from Kick 2 and Omnisphere 2.0. And this is a, a full track, you can check it on the channel. But basically, these are all set up. So like right here, I've got the Kyra bass set for channel one, 33, 34. My uh, Hypersaw slash uh, Epic Trance style lead and uh, several other things. And actually what I can do is just play you everything that comes from Kyra. So that is a lot of fun to do, and then if we just uh, turn everything else back on, you can hear the full weight. There you go guys uh, hope that is helpful so please leave any questions comments or concerns down below let me know what you think of the Kyra let me know if you think that this solution is is cool maybe it's a bit of a pain in the butt to you uh, but again you can just use the Kyra by itself um, you don't have to go through all the uh, hoops that I jumped through to get this to work it does take a little bit of trial and error and it took me a little bit, but not, not too much time. I was actually surprised because ASIO for All, something I've tried using before, uh, probably not in the last couple of years, and it does look like they've updated it since the last time I used it. So it actually does work with this. Uh, uh, people asked about latency in this setup. The, there is latency that gets added as complexity is added to your Ableton project. That's regardless, anytime you use any external gear, uh, with Ableton, you start stacking in plugins and plugins and stuff. You are adding more and more latency to the project. That has nothing to do with the way the ASIO driver is communicating and blah, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, if I'm just going Kyra by itself, especially, and nothing crazy in the Ableton project, there's not any issue with latency that I can tell, at least so far. So, but give this a shot yourself. Let me know how it works out for you. And again, this is Marshall. Have a good night, guys. Thanks.